Hey everyone, I'm Mike from theparkprodigy.com and on today's video we are going to take a look at the ultimate comparison between the Disney monorail resorts. We're looking at the Disney Grand Floridian Resort, the Disney Contemporary Resort, and the Disney Polynesian Resort. We're going to break down all the pros and cons so you guys can pick the best Disney deluxe resort for your next Walt Disney World trip. I'm really excited for this video. I learned a lot while doing some research. Some stuff I did not even know. Um, and I am kind of surprised at my conclusion on which Disney Monorail Resort is the best, which we'll get to at the end. I hope you guys find this video helpful. And if you are planning a Walt Disney World trip, be sure to go check out our website, theparkprodigy.com. And if you do stick around till the end of this video, I will explain how you could save an additional $50 by booking your trip through us, The Park Prodigy. But let's go get started. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. This is the ultimate comparison between the Disney monorail resorts. And we all know when planning a trip to Walt Disney World, most families are looking for the most magical options for their Disney stay. Now, the Disney monorail is one of the most memorable components of all Disney parks, and it is the centerpiece for innovation at Walt Disney World. And we believe that's probably why the resorts on the monorail line happen to be some of the most popular resorts on Disney property. And they're really some of the first resorts that come to mind when you start thinking of planning your Walt Disney World trip. So now what exactly is the Disney monorail resort line? So not only does the monorail serve as an express service to transport guests into the Magic Kingdom, but it also can zoom you along the tracks to three different Disney World resorts. Now, these resorts are all deluxe and have the incredible option of using a resort monorail to go back and forth from your room to the Magic Kingdom Park. And those three resorts are the Disney Grand Floridian Resort, the Disney Contemporary Resort, and the Disney Polynesian Resort. But now here comes the tough question, which one is the best? And that's exactly what we're gonna talk about in this video. There are many different reasons as to why you would choose one resort over the other and what we're going to break down in this video is pricing, theming, dining, and amenities. I'm also going to give you my personal opinion, you know, because that's I think one of the reasons why we we do so well at the Park Prodigy. We're always going to give you our unbiased opinion and I will also say this. I am lucky enough at this point in life that I do have Disney Vacation Club and I have Disney Vacation Club at the Grand Floridian Resort and I just want to state that I'm not stating that to brag I'm stating that because you guys are going to be very surprised by my final answer um, and I'm kind of giving a little <laughs> hint easter egg as to where I'm going with this video but that's why we made this video I know it's a very tough decision and truthfully like I said while doing the research I was very surprised myself and we want to help you guys make sure that you pick the best Disney monorail resort for your next Disney vacation. So let's talk about the location of the monorail resorts. So now, while all three monorail resorts are located, well, you know, pretty much on the monorail line, you do have a bunch of transportation options and each location is extremely unique to each individual hotel. So we're gonna start with the Grand Floridian and the Grand Floridian is located right up against Seven Seas Lagoon to the left side of Magic Kingdom. There are many ways to get guests into the Magic Kingdom Park from the Grand Floridian, and some of the most popular are less than a mile walking trail, the monorail stop on the resort monorail line, water taxis on Seven Seas Lagoon, and short bus rides to any of the Disney theme parks. And just as a special note, that walking trail is completely new. It is brand new scenic walking trail that happens to be one of our favorite new elements at the Grand Floridian. Special note, it is about a 15 minute slow walk to the Magic Kingdom Park, but it is definitely a game changer. Now, moving over to the Contemporary Resort. If location is a big win for you, then the Contemporary Resort is the best monorail resort on the line. The reason being is the Contemporary is the closest resort to the Magic Kingdom Park, and it is only a very short walk from the actual entrance of the Magic Kingdom. And if you guys have been watching some of our videos, you know that I have not stopped talking about this. This is one of the, the things that I love the most about the Contemporary Resort. It is super close. You can walk, you have that convenience. And I do think there is a tremendous amount of value when you look at that, especially if you're traveling with small kids. Now, taking it one step further, just like the Grand Floridian, obviously we do have the monorail stop being right outside. The other cool thing about the Contemporary is the monorail actually goes through the lobby. That is the iconic Contemporary Resort that you've probably seen in the photos. 
the monorail goes right through the lobby. So you, the monorail stop is really that much closer. You also do have same kind of options you have at the other resorts. You do have the boat options on the Seven Seas Lagoon. You can even take the boats over to the Disney Wilderness Lodge when they are running to kind of go and resort hop a little bit. And then you also have bus options to all of the Walt Disney World resorts. All right, now hopping over to the Disney Polynesian Resort. So the Disney Polynesian is the furthest resort from the Magic Kingdom Park. But just like the other resorts, you do have the same options. It's just a little bit further away, right? And we will say that the fact that the Disney Grand Floridian Resort has that walkway now, you actually can walk to the Magic Kingdom Park from the Polynesian. Obviously, this is going to be the furthest walk out of all of the three resorts because you actually really do have to walk pretty much from the Polynesian over to the Grand Floridian first. And then you'll walk pretty much from the Grand Floridian on that new walkway to the Magic Kingdom Park. So it is a possibility, but it definitely is a walk. But again, for me, I just love walking to the park. So even if it takes me a little bit longer, I love the fact that we do now have that option. Of course, you do have the Disney monorail, which will take you to and from the Magic Kingdom Park. You do have those great boats. Also, the other cool thing we like about the Polynesian is you could walk to the Ticket and Transportation Center, which is actually where I worked when I was a Disney cast member. And you can hop on the iconic ferry boats which is another um, geared after my hometown, Staten Island, New York. So I'm a big fan of taking the ferry boats whenever I can as well. Outside of that, you can take the Disney buses to all four Walt Disney World theme parks. So as you can see, each resort has you know pros, cons as far as transportation. But if we had to give the edge to anyone, we would probably go with the Disney Contemporary Resort. Now, keeping the party rolling, we all know that theming at Walt Disney World is such an intricate part of why people love it, right? You really do feel like you are in another world and then you kind of break it down a little bit further. Everyone loves the Disney resorts because they all have a unique theme and something you know that everyone can love no matter which Disney resort you stay at. So let's look at the theming at the three monorail resorts. And as you'll see, all of them offer a completely different experience for guests, specifically when we get into the rooms. Now, the themes are vastly different and we think that this has a big influence on where some of you might want to stay. And again, it all depends on the vibe, whether you want to go with something tropical, relaxing, vintage, or maybe classy, you know, upscale and modern. So once again, we're going to start with the Disney Grand Floridian Resort. Now the overall ambiance on the Grand Floridian has been modeled after many different luxury resorts throughout the United States. Now, the most obvious design influence came from San Diego's Hotel Del Carinado. But overall, the campus is uh, extremely beautiful, right? It has a variety of multi-story buildings, has a bunch of just gorgeous 19th century seaside architecture, right? While the theming is breathtaking, we also feel like one of its downfalls is that it is a Disney deluxe resort and there aren't that many, you know, nods to the Disney theming that we see at some of these other Disney Deluxe resorts, right? We think the theming is lacking. Now, there is plenty of inspiration that can be taken from the classic Disney films. Some of the theming especially feels run down, but overall, if you wanna feel like you're staying at Disney during the 1800s and you kind of get that version of the castle royalty with once in a lifetime nostalgia, this is the perfect hotel for you. Keeping the theming rolling, let's move over to the Disney Contemporary Resort. Now, the contemporary theme is based all around futuristic ideas clashing with modern upscale vibes. All around the resort, you will find modern art pieces, a ton of Disney historical photographs explaining the resort and the construction of the contemporary. Now, as construction finishes on some of these updated rooms that Disney's currently working on, we can expect to see the Disney monorail as a large inspiration as well as stylish Pixar theming. And we're hoping this really allows for guests to feel like they're staying at a sleek Disney resort which has always been the clear theme here. Now, the Contemporary even has a 90 foot tall mural by Disney legend, Mary Blair, which we think is really, really cool. And one of those nostalgia things that we hope they never change about the Disney Contemporary Resort. Okay, so moving over to the Disney Polynesian Resort, the overall theme of the Polynesian is a casual Pacific paradise. There are plenty of beaches with tropical vegetation, waterfalls, tiki torches, and serene music. Now this resort is an oasis with walking trails through the green lush landscaping and plenty of opportunities for moonlit 
white sand beach walks. The overall theme was inspired by the cultures of the South Pacific with a variety of long houses, with a central lobby in the great ceremonial house. And the color palettes have a fresh and vibrant appeal with lush greens and tropical oranges and reds. Now, one of the coolest things we love about the Polynesian is the theming over the years has gotten an upgrade, something that we think the Grand Floridian absolutely needs. Some of the touches to the Disney characters that you will now see are Moana and Lilo and Stitch. And the other cool thing is that all of the upgraded rooms now do have that Moana theme which we absolutely love. And so there you have the three themes for the Disney Monorail Resorts. I do think that the Polynesian does have the edge over the contemporary in this regard. The contemporary, I love the sleek and the subtle nods to Mickey. But again, I think when you go to Disney, like I, I kind of just want to be blown away by the Disney influences as soon as I walk in. And I do get that vibe at the Polynesian more than the other two Disney Monorail resorts. All right, so keeping the party rolling. And now this is a very important aspect of any Disney World vacation, and that is going to be the pricing of the rooms. So now while these three resorts share closest to the Magic Kingdom theme park, the room structure available pricing is very different. Now, something that is similar between all the rooms in these resorts are, you know, they do have the basic complimentary items that you will find in many hotels around the world. Specifically at these three Disney Deluxe Resorts, you guys will get these in-room freebies, the hairdryer, the complimentary Wi-Fi, telephone with voicemail, pool towels, bathrobes, flat panel television, in-room safe, refrigerator, ironing and ironing board, coffee and tea setup. Now, and if you guys have been watching my room reviews, you know I'm pretty much gonna go through each of these items in the room reviews as well, and all my friends are gonna make fun of me, but you do have them. I, I, I know that it's pretty standard at this point, but. We just wanna make sure we do touch base on those freebies in the rooms. Now we're also gonna to touch base on the club level rooms pretty much across the board very, very quickly. Each of these deluxe resorts offers club level rooms, which are higher priced, but they also offer the same amazing perks such as complimentary health club access, secure key access to the club level lounge. They do serve refreshments from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m., personalized front desk and guest services, access to concierge services at the exclusive clubs, and then also complimentary newspapers in the club level lounge. Just a big, I mean, if you're at the Grand Floridian, you're already in you know, nostalgia going back in time. So nothing like reading a paper newspaper um, to kind of get your day started at Walt Disney World. Those are some of the great amenities at the club level rooms. Now let's jump into the individual pricing and rooms at each of these deluxe resorts. Okay, so we're gonna start with the Grand Floridian. The rooms and the pricing at the Grand Floridian Resort can also be a major con to this resort. If you're a person where you want the amenities of the Grand Floridian, but you don't care about how much the rooms are, then this resort is definitely perfect for you. The rooms have a sophisticated design with colors of gold and green. Now for a deluxe resort, they do feel a bit stale and bland. Um, and again, this is one of the downsides of the Grand Floridian. We really think that they do need to upgrade the rooms here. But from a standard room, Price point, you're gonna look at $700 a night to $1,200 a night. Now they do have a ton of rooms at the Disney Grand Floridian Resort. The Garden View rooms, we have about 410. Lagoon View, we have 173. Theme Park Views, we have 84. And then the Lux Garden Views, we have 16. Now, as far as the club level rooms, on the outer lodges, you guys are going to be looking at $1,600 to $4,300 a night, mostly because typically the outer lodges will have some of those theme park views that we discussed. And now going into the main building, the club level rooms are going to start around $1,200 a night and go up to $3,000 a night. Now we're going to move over to the Contemporary Resort. And we have to say, even before the refurbishment, the Disney Contemporary Resort rooms were amongst the nicest of all the Disney Deluxe rooms. Now there are 1,041 rooms available at the Contemporary Resort for guests to choose from. Now, these rooms are standard rooms all the way up to the suites that we've been discussing. And the cool thing about the Contemporary is the guest rooms are actually 422 square feet, which makes them some of the biggest on Walt Disney World property. Now, the brand new refurbished rooms are extremely sleek with stark whites, slate grays, and bright pops of red throughout. These rooms look incredible with their new incredible theming, which is loud but subtle enough to still be very modern and upscale. Now, the regular rooms at the Disney Contemporary Resort are gonna start from $500 a night all the way up to $1,000 per night. You do have the lake view, the garden view, the theme park view, standard view, and the king view. As far as the theme park views go, I will say that these are some of the best on Disney property because you are so close to the park 
you really feel like you're literally like in the middle or at, you know, right there at the Magic Kingdom Park. Now, as far as the groom's wick club level access, so the suites at the Disney Contemporary Resort are going to start right around $727 per night to be exact. And they're gonna pretty much run all the way up to $1,500 a night. Guests also do have access to club level suites, which are gonna start right around $1,400 a night and can run all the way up to $4,000 per night. Okay, so over to the last Disney monorail resort as far as pricing and we're gonna look at the Disney Polynesian Resort. Now the guest rooms at the Polynesian Resort are beautifully decorated and themed with subtle but impactful designing. Now, there is a soothing but invigorating color palette of beautiful tapes, beiges, and bright pops of the South Pacific, and you really feel like you get that vibe from the minute you step in these rooms. Now, as far as pricing, when we're looking at the standard rooms, the price here is gonna start at $600 a night, and for the Disney Polynesian, goes all the way up to $1,100 per night. For the club level rooms, we're looking at $875 per night, all the way up to $2,300 per night. And then of course, they do have the same suites. Um, so you know, some of the same suite options as at the Contemporary, the similar pricing, it's gonna start right around $1,800 a night, all the way up to you know $4,000 per night. The other cool thing that we will, that we do have to mention about the Disney Polynesian Resort, and that is the Disney Polynesian bungalows. So that these are exactly like they sound. These essentially your hotel rooms are on the Disney uh, Water of the Seven Seas Lagoon and pricing over here is gonna start right around $2,000 per night. Okay, so moving on and this, we're again to the end of the list, but these are just as important, these next two topics specifically this one, dining, and we all know dining on any vacation is extremely important, so we're gonna make sure to spend a good amount of time on these. And it's important to note that when we look at the dining of the Disney Monorail Resorts, when it comes to the food, these three resorts couldn't be any more different. Not only what type of food they offer, but also the type of experiences that you can have at each resort. Now, there is a blend of fine dining, quick service, lounges and bars at each, but some of these resorts have so much more to bring than the others. Now, let's compare exactly what we're talking about, starting with the Grand Floridian. Now, there are many different places to grab a bite, or drink or have a romantic upscale evening at the Grand Floridian. Specifically, when we're looking at lounges and pool bars, we do have the Enchanted Rose, Citric Coast Lounge, Beaches Pool and Bar and Grill, the Courtyard Pool Bar, and then for quick service, we have Gasparilla Island Grill. Now, as far as table service, we do have 1900 Park Fair, which is character dining with Mary Poppins, the Mad Hatter, Pooh, and Cinderella. Citric Coast, which is another upscale dining location, the Garden View Tea Room, Grand Floridian Cafe, Narcusis, and then the world famous Victoria and Alberts. Now, moving over to the contemporary, we do have a few lounges and bars. We have the Outer Rim Lounge, Sandbar, and then we have for quick service, the Contempo Cafe. Now, as far as sit down, we do have the California Grill, Chef Mickey's Character Dining with Mickey and some of the most popular Disney characters such as Donald and Pluto, and then the brand new Steakhouse 71. Moving over to the Disney Polynesian Resort for lounges and bars, we do have the Barefoot Pool Bar, the Oasis Pool Bar, Trader Sam's, and then Tambu Lounge. For quick service, we have, again, the world famous Captain Cook's, which is a traditional American fare, but also they have Polynesian inspired dishes. And then moving it over, one step further, we have the Kona Island, and then of course you do have the Dole Whip stand as well for quick service. Table service, we have Disney Spirit of Oahu dinner show. Hopefully they bring that back soon. Ohana, which is back, that is another character dining location in Walt Disney World. You'll have the possibility to see Lilo, Stitch, Mickey and Minnie, and then the Kona Cafe. Now, as far as the dining, I have to admit, you know, again, there. I think all these hotels are so amazing, specifically for dining in their own right, that it's very hard for me to give one the edge over the other. I will say that as far as the lounges go, I I've, I've pretty much have tried every lounge in Walt Disney World at this point. I have to give a huge shout out to the Enchanted Rose, which really grew on me. I have went there the first time. I wasn't blown away by the service, but I've gone back a few times after that. And I will say it definitely is pricey, but from a theming standpoint and for just a, a very nice way to start maybe a special evening or you know special date night in Walt Disney World, you got to go check out the Enchanted Rose. I will say also Hidden Gem, obviously you guys have heard me talk about Trader Sam's, a bunch, 
Trader Sam's, you're gonna have a ton of fun if you go there and you're looking for a drink at Walt Disney World. But the bar at Steakhouse 71, and I'm not exaggerating when I say this, the, uh, the level of service that we receive and the personal touch that, I, you know, the bartenders took the time to speak with each guest and just, you know, get a feel for what we were really looking to drink. Not only that, what we were in Walt Disney World to experience, what we were most excited about, I will say is top notch. I've never experienced anything like it. And I will 100% be going back to Steakhouse 71 every single time I am in Walt Disney World. And for that reason, we are going to give the Disney Contemporary Resort the edge as far as dining on the Disney Monorail Resorts. So now moving over to amenities and recreation. Now, since all of these resorts are considered deluxe resorts, the amenities and recreation options are plentiful. You simply will not get bored while staying at any of these resorts, no matter which one you do decide to stay at for your next Disney trip. Now, the following amenities are shared amongst all three of the Disney Monorail Resorts. You have the marina boat rentals, the fitness centers, arcade games, guided fishing excursions, jogging trails, resort campfire at night, movies under the stars, and then specialty cruises. But with all those amenities being shared, you can already see that each Disney resort does have their own little style and taste. And here are some of the unique amenities at each of the Disney monorail resorts, starting with the Grand Floridian. So at the Grand Floridian, you do have the beach pool, which has slides, waterfalls, and a play area. The play area is Alice in Wonderland interactive. It is like, a, it's amazing. Honestly, it's, it's really very, very, very well themed and very, very cool. The kids will love it. You also have the courtyard pool, which is quieter, and they do have a hot tub for the adults. To get it one step further into the main lobby, you do have the Wonderland Tea Party, Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique, whenever it does open back up. And then of course, Senses, which is the Disney Spa, um, which is part of the name Disney Grand Floridian and Spa. Moving over to the contemporary. So you do have the feature pool, which does include a 17 foot high water slide and white sand beaches. You have the other bay pool, which again is a little bit quieter. Included in that is the children's wadding pool and water playground. You have a full size basketball court, lakeside yoga, cabana rentals, volleyball court, tennis court, and Pirates and Pals Fireworks Voyage. Moving over to the Polynesian, we do have the lava pool area, which in my opinion is top five coolest, you know, pools in all of Walt Disney World. It does have a 142 foot long water slide, towering volcanoes and beach like pools. Included in that area is Kiki Tiki's splash area. You have the Oasis pool and patio, which is again, quieter, more of an adult vibe over there. And you do have a volleyball court. Now, looking at this, like on the outside in, I, you know, the contemporary definitely has the most amenities, I would say, as far as unique amenities as, you know, basketball court, uh, lakeside yoga, the Pirates and Palace fireworks. But I will say that I do think that <laughs> there's two things, right? And I kind of look at the Dole Whip um, bar as like, an amenity. Honestly, I don't look at it as dining um, because it's just as much fun as it is, you know, appetizing. I would say between the lava pool area and the fact that you do have the Dole Whip bar right there, as far as if I had to grade the amenities and give a clear cut winner, I, I'm going to go with the Polynesian um, as the winner there, just because I think the lava pool area is so cool and the theming is so cool, uh, even cooler than you'll see at the contemporary pool that I just have to go with that as the winner. Okay, so there you have it, guys. Those are pretty much the most important things that you will want to take into account when comparing the Disney Monorail resorts. I I don't know if it's a clear cut winner, but again, I did say that I was gonna give my personal opinion. I hope that you personally at home found this video helpful enough that you have a, a better idea of what each of these Disney Monorail resorts do provide. If it was me, and again, this might be surprising because as someone who always envisioned themselves as saying, hey, I love the Disney Grand Floridian, that's you know why I bought the timeshare because that's where I thought that I wanted to vacation um, for the rest of my years at Disney. But as someone who now has you know started the park prodigy and I've stayed at all of these hotels, I do think for me, you know, and if I was planning my vacation and I, you know, when I've been paying for my own vacations, going down to Disney, I just feel so much better paying at the Disney Polynesian Resort. You could see it's right in the middle as far as pricing. But I do think that because of like where it's at, because you pretty much get to pay a little bit less than the Grand Floridian, you might pay a little bit more than, a, than at the Contemporary. I just think the theming, you know, as you could see the, the pools, like all of that, you get such 
a bigger bang for your buck at the Disney Polynesian Resort. Now, again, there is something to be said for the convenience, and I completely understand if you do want to be right next to the Magic Kingdom Park, go with one of those maybe theme park views at the Contemporary, and also the Contemporary has some great restaurants that I really love, and I've spoke about that, obviously, in this. I think the winner, though, is the Polynesian. Any of these Disney Deluxe Resorts, you are going to get the Disney touch, right? So, as you can see, there's something for everyone. But hopefully you found this helpful, okay? like I keep saying. If you did, please be sure to leave a like on this video. And we did put a lot of time and effort collectively as a team. I have to give a huge shout out to my team, Nikki, Kurt, and Crystal for helping me put this long video together because it was not easy. Um, outside of that, like I said, if you guys are in the middle of planning a Walt Disney World vacation, be sure to go check out our website, theparkprodigy.com. We do have a bunch of free vacation planning tools. We have a bunch of free resources to help you plan your next Disney World vacation. And if you do need a little additional guidance, and if you're looking to team up with a travel planner, we would love to help you out. And like I said, if you do email me, mike at theparkprodigy.com, tell me you watched the ultimate comparison between the Disney monorail resorts. We will give you an additional $50 off your next Disney World vacation. Not only that, all families who book with the Park Prodigy will receive free concierge service, meaning we're gonna help essentially help you plan everything. From the minute you step into Walt Disney World to the minute you leave, we're gonna help you plan everything from your rides to your dining to all these cool amenities that you might wanna do while you're in Disney. We'll help you plan it all. So please don't hesitate to reach out if you do need a little additional help. I think that's all the time we had for today. This was a long one, but it was very, very important. And again, I really appreciate you guys checking out this video. Until next time, I will talk to you soon.